for you to find out, explore. Whether you are there or not, your body is there or not, right? Whether there is a coexistence between the two or not, and whether in this coexistence, this need of yours and the need of the body is fulfilled or not fulfilled. So this is something, you know, I would leave it on you to, you know, kind of verify for yourself. That is first thing to do. Then, when we have verified all this, then we can go back to, you know, whatever you know, kind of uh, tradition we have, and I think we'll be able to understand that better in the light of you know, this self-analysis as to what was the, you know, what was being conveyed. One thing you know will keep open you know, to uh, kind of look into further this issue of what is tangible. There are many things you know, which we have come to assume and we don't really you know, investigate into them. So <coughs> other things is okay, you know, what to come in. But uh, just tangibility, you know, what we call as tangible <coughs> has to be still, you know, kept open. So if I take it, you know, it means something which is real is tangible. Something which is not real is not, no, not tangible or intangible. What we have been thinking is something which is physical is tangible. Something which is not physical is not tangible. Let me take this example and it will make it very clear to you. Now, if you ask yourself, how do you see, you know, understand that your body is there? By looking at the shape of your body, fine. Keep your eyes closed. Can you still see that the body is there? How do you feel that? The sensation. Now, for you, this body seems to be tangible. Who is deciding the body is tangible? Self. So the authentication is done by the self. That the body is there. So which is more authentic? The self or the body? Self. Very, very simple experiment if you do. Okay, you will see. Now you can see that the body is tangible and the self is also tangible. The fact that this body is is verified by the self. 
You have to start saying everything I said. Mm -hmm. Lot of things are being clarified. <laughs> so, you know, as we go on, all these issues will be slowly getting clarified. <laughs> Fine. So, with this, okay, uh, we have some more time before we start, I think, this uh, session. <coughs> Like we mentioned, uh, there are uh, questions. Uh, two questions. Uh, uh, the attention of the uh, microphone is mainly of students. Uh, one of the questions asked was, what is the main purpose of life? And the other one asked, is death natural acceptable? So, okay, at the physical of death, the qualities of death are natural acceptable, but uh, if you look at death as, uh, death can be seen as not natural because we want the continuity of the eternity of death, uh, I think that was what's in fact. Yeah, in fact, uh, we'll respond to this question later because when you are able to see this nature of the body and the nature of the self, okay, then when it comes to death, right? Death takes place of the body or the self? Body. And who is afraid of the death? <laughs> Such simple things, you know. <laughs> the death is taking place of the body. The fear is in the self. But where is the self? Yeah. Body is gone. The is not tangible, not see. that also. All these are related, you know. Now, what is the problem? The fear is of the self, for the body. As long as the self is identifying itself with the body, there is a trouble. Right? So I have to understand the self, I have to understand the body, I have to understand the coexistence of the two. Right? If I do this, then I can identify the problem of death is with this mm -hmm. and the fear is in this. And this fear is because I am associating this with this. That is the source of the fear. Right? All this will take off in story. Yes. So, ये भी पता नहीं है कौन डर रहा है और किसके लिए डर रहा है खुद के लिए डर रहा है किसी और के लिए डर रहा है एनीवे व्हाट आई वुड लाइक टू डू इज टू प्रोसीड विद दिस process of putting uh, forward these proposals and asking you to verify. As we go on verifying this, lot of things will be, you know, kind of clarified in the process. So many of the questions which are coming up now will be better, you know, kind of answered as we go along. There is an interesting last question you can take up. Yeah. The example of and then people are, we are all in fear of death, but none of us has come back uh, from the death, know that how the terrible the death is. So, why, so then why do we fear? It's not uh, the real death that we are uh, afraid of. In reality, if you look into, uh, it is said that it's a fear of what you, a fear of losing what you have. You have your father, parents, money, wealth. So then it is due with attachment, the desire. And, uh, you know, so it's, a, it's not a fear, it's a fear of losing of what you have. When you <laughs> other uh, examples that I would like to share is when you talk about the self. 
for example, this space disappear. But we don't see that. But if you put some slight small paper on feather, then you will see that it's uh, flying or it's, uh, you know, then you feel that there is a air. So in order to recognize this, the existence of the uh, air, so you have to have some kind of object. So that's called the, 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 the independence. So when we talk about the uh, self, which what uh, creates a confusion to me, is that when you put the uh, I as a uh, self here, and then what we, this one I agree, uh, I, I can under, understand this one who existence at the relative level. But at the uh, subtle uh, self, when you really go into, then, uh, then it makes a problem. So, if we can understand and assume that, okay, the existence of self is there because of this, because of that. So based on that, if we are discussing, I think that there is a less confusion. Confusion is when you go deeper level and bringing the, the, the self-existence using the uh, philosophy of our masters that were not accomplished. Then it becomes difficult confusion bringing that self into this uh, I think I will, you know, uh, leave it for you to, to look into yourself and, you know, start investigating. And when you do this investigation, then probably you will look back to what is being said. And understand it better. So I would leave it open, you know, for you to explore. <coughs> so let me uh, just sum this up, you know, what we have talked about in yesterday, and then we, you know, break for tea and come back and continue with our discussion. So first thing we said was that if you look at human being, basic human aspiration is to ensure continuity of happiness and prosperity. And in order to do that, all I need is the right understanding in the sense, relationship with human beings, and necessary physical facilities. This is what is required for us as human beings to ensure the fulfillment of need, of happiness and prosperity. If I am living with this, I am living with human consciousness. On the other hand, if I am trying to satisfy my needs only on the basis of physical facilities, this is not enough. If I go ahead with this, I have this feeling of unhappiness and deprivation. And I cause unhappiness and deprivation for others as well. So if this is what I am doing, this is I am living with animal consciousness. And I said that this transition from animal consciousness to human consciousness is what is essential for all of us. And this is what is called progress, what is called development. And then we also said that the role of education is to enable this transformation from animal consciousness to human consciousness. So this was one important point which we made in the first day of the second session. Then we said that we need to explore into ourselves, investigate into ourselves, you know, and find out Know, what is natural for us and what is our state of being today. So, we you know, uh, <coughs> said that the self-exploration, the self-investigation is an essential thing to do for all of us. So, then in regard to that self-exploration, we have asked which is, one is the content of self-exploration and the process of self-exploration. Regarding the content of self-exploration, we said we want to explore into our basic desire as a human being and our program of action to ensure this fulfillment of our desire. And this exploration will do through the process of self-verification. Whatever is said is in the form of a proposal. I don't have to take it to be true. I have to verify it on my own, in my own right. And this verification has two parts. One is on the basis of my natural acceptance, I find out whether this proposal is correct for me, not correct for me. 
Second, if it is correct for me on the basis of my natural acceptance, then I live according to it in terms of my behavior as a human being and work with the rest of nature. If they lead to mutual happiness and mutual prosperity, then this is the right proposal, otherwise it is not a right proposal. So we said, through this process of self-verification, we will investigate into this desire and the program of action. That's what we had said in the afternoon session for yesterday. Then we made a proposal about the desire. We said, as a human being, I desire for happiness, prosperity and continuity of the truth. And we did this investigation whether this is desire for happiness, prosperity and continuity of the truth is there for all of us or not. Then we said, let us define happiness. So we define happiness whether it is same for all of us or different for all of us. So we define happiness as to be in a state of natural acceptance or to be in a state of harmony. It's happiness. To be forced to be in a state of disharmony or contradiction is unhappiness. And then we said that if to be in harmony is happiness and this is our expanse of being starting from individual to family to society to nature and existence. Then my program of action to ensure continuity of happiness would be to understand the harmony and to live in harmony at each of these levels, starting from the individual to family to society to nature and existence. As a result, we said our you know, activity of the rest of the day would be to unfold into each one of them one by one. Unfold, unfold into the harmony in individual, in human being, mm -hmm. harmony in family, harmony in society, harmony in nature and existence. Mm -hmm. So we had started with exploring into harmony in individual, harmony in human being. So that is what we have done here. We have studied into human being, into ourselves, mm -hmm. and we found that the human being is coexistence of self, I and the body. This self is the world of consciousness. This body is the world of material. And because human being is coexistence of self, I and the body, then I have to take care of this world of consciousness. I have to take care of this world of material. And I have to take care of both of them. I cannot undermine any one of them. That was the conclusion. That I need to take care of the body. I have to take to me, I need to take care of the self. I have to take care of the needs of the both, you know, facility, physical facility, which is the need of the body, and happiness, which is the need of the self. Therefore, I have to ensure physiochemical things, the rest of nature, I have to ensure right understanding and right feeling in the self. Both are required. You cannot undermine any one of them. So that was the conclusion about the harmony in human being, harmony in individual. That if both are understood, both the needs are satisfied, then there will be harmony in human beings, harmony in So that is what we said. Then we said that if this is coexistence of self, I and the body, then we need to dwell little deeper into the self. So that is what we did in the last session yesterday. So if you look at the self, these are the activity which are taking place, the activity of desire, thought, expectation which can be understood in terms of imaging, that is making an image, analyzing, right? that is working out the details of how this image can be fulfilled, then selecting and testing in terms of my behavior and work with the external world. This is something which is taking place in each one of us. I am asking, I mean I had asked you, to find out whether this is taking place in you all the time or not. That is one question. The other question was that if this is taking place in you all the time, right, then find out this list of your desires and see whether they are coming from preconditioning, coming from sensation or coming from your natural acceptance. If it is coming from preconditioning or sensation, you are decided by the others, mm -hmm. right, dictated by others, 
Therefore, this is an state of bondage, state of patantrita. If it is coming through your self verification through your natural acceptance, this is the state of satantrita. This is the state of self organization. So, I had asked you to look into yourself, find this out, right? see how many of these desires are coming from preconditioning, how many of them are coming from sensation, how many of them are coming through your natural you know, acceptance to self verification. So, this is what we have discussed till now. Right? So, we will break for tea, when we come back, we will try to study into harmony of the self with the body. So, this is about harmony in the self. Now, we will talk about the harmony with the body. That will help us to identify our need of physical facility. Right? So, this issue that the physical facility need is unlimited will be sorted out. Right? on the basis of this discussion on harmony with the body. So we will come back and discuss what